everyone, I'm Allie with Potomac Beads. I'm creating this Lady Violet necklace, a very, very simple and elegant design featuring one stitch and one stitch only. Remember, if you do need any materials, you can check out the links below to shop with us online at potomacbeads.com as well as potomacbeads.eu. Gather up your materials and let's get started on this fun herringbone easy necklace. So the first thing that we're gonna do for our Lady Violet, after grabbing all of our materials, I have here my pink opal four millimeter bicones, my PC sunflowers in that nice light rose, as well as some Duracoat galvanized champagne delicas, and then my 11 OC beads. I have the pink oval Potomac crystal pear drop in the 13 by 18 millimeter. I also have our new 13 by 18 millimeter settings. And when you look at that, the setting goes straight through the back there. So you have holes in it, so you don't have to go in and actually do the Rivoli in a peyote stitch or a bezel. And what I'm gonna do is lay it right inside those prong area. If the prongs are bent down a little bit, just bend them up, they'll easily sit back in. If you have nylon jaw pliers, that's great. You can use those so you don't scratch the crystal. If you don't have the nylon jaw pliers, what I recommend is going in and just putting pressure right on the prong and not grabbing it with your pliers, not going in and kind of judging or pushing it around. Just go right in and just bend the prongs right down towards the piece. Bend the prongs so that way you're bending opposite corners. Try to put your finger there so you stop the pliers from rubbing against the crystal. And then go in and you can see I'm doing opposite directions. So opposite corners. After I have those done, then I can go in directly over the prong if I want to and just do a little push down to make sure that it's secure around the crystal. Once you have your crystal in its prong setting, you're good to, be go good to go to get out your beads and get ready to start our herringbone stitch. To begin now, I have all of my beads laying out my 11 O's, my Delicas, my four millimeter bicones, and then I have my crystals set off to the side. I'm going to be adding my clasp after the fact, so I'm leaving myself at the bottom of some 0 .006 wildfire beading thread. You want to leave yourself about 10 inches at the base of the thread in order to add your clasp. I just have a shorter piece here to demo and to make it easier to see without pulling a ton of thread through. We're going to be doing a classic herringbone stitch. To begin, I want to add two beads and then two more beads of my 11 OC beads. We'll let those drop down next to that bead stop, and again, you'll have about 10 inches after. And you want to sew back up through the first two beads toward the second two. That's going to have these beads lay right next to one another there. From here, we're going to go in and we're going to add our classic herringbone stitch. Two beads get added in. I'm coming out of bead one there on the left. I go down bead one on the right. When I get to the outer edge, I'm gonna pick up one Delica for that nice kind of vintagey look that I'm going for. And I'm gonna sew back up through bead number two from the new row that I just added. So I was coming up bead number one from what looks like row number two of seed beads. I add two beads and sew down bead number two. I'm now adding one Delica just for the look of it and going up through bead number two of the row I just added. Up one bead, add two beads, and go down bead number two. Pull those nice and tight and see how they lay right kind of opening and on that V. Add one more Delica to decorate the end and then I'm going to show you from this angle, feels awkward for me because I usually like to twitch or flip it as I'm working on it. And I go back up through the second bead from the row I just added. Now, while I'm working on this to go quickly, I add my two beads coming up bead number one. I go down bead number two. I add my Delica for the outer edge. I go up through bead number two and then I flip my project in my hand. So I'm just twisting it in my hand. So I'm always adding the beads from the left to the right. It just makes me a faster and more efficient beater. And that's why I'm going to do this technique. So after adding 
about 10 rows. We're gonna get ready with our bicones to add a little bit of crystal and that nice baby pink to the bottom of the necklace to have it be a little bit of a drop coming off the bottom of the herringbone. After 10 rows or so of that herringbone stitch, I'm going to add my first bicone. Now you can do this section as long as you want if you don't want as many of the crystals hanging down further along the back of the neck. You can wait and do about six inches and then start to add the crystals. I'm gonna have the crystals since it comes in um, a fairly large package, I'm gonna have them all along the bottom. So I'm coming out of my piece and I'm gonna add two beads just like I've been doing for the regular herringbone stitch. Coming out bead number one, going back down bead number two from the previous row. And as I'm coming out here then, I'm going to add my one Delica, then I'm going to add an 11 OC bead, then I add my four millimeter bicone. One more 11 OC bead. So basically right after the Delica, you're adding 11 crystal 11. I'm going to take my thread and needle, go back up through that crystal and the 11, skipping the bottom 11. From here, I'm gonna go back up through the Delica as well and after I go back up through the Delica, which would have been much easier if I did it at the same time, we're gonna go back through and connect on to the new row. So stepping up just like normal. See how that pulls that just so it's hanging as a drop right down from the side. I'm going to do a couple more rows of our herringbone. And you can establish, because this is just a very simple stitch, exactly where you want to add the crystals. I'm going to add them every other time as I come down on the herringbone stitch. So I'm only adding them to one side. I'll go in and I'll create this second or that first Delica after going into the top. So I'm not adding any at the top. If you want to change up the look, you can add some to the top. If you add some to the top, make sure to uh, let us know and let us know how that differs and how it looks. I'm going to add two beads here. Now you can see I've had one where I did not add my bicone as a drop. I'm going to do the exact same thing now that I did previously. Delica 11, bicone 11. Back up through the bicone, skipping that first 11, and through the 11 and the Delica. Give a nice tight pull, and then continue on. So you can see it spaces it out, just putting that one little Delica right in between. Once this comes down on the nape of the neck too, they'll just sit nice and easy and be in that V section as we come down to add our crystal into the base. So I want you to continue adding this for approximately seven inches, depending on how long you want your necklace to be. Seven inches will get us a 16 inch necklace total. If you want it to be a little bit longer, go eight inches, you'll get a 19 uh, inch necklace as well, because you're gonna add some extra inches as we go in adding the V section as well as our clasp. So go ahead and go do this for about six to eight or nine inches, depending on how long you want your necklace to be. After you have your six to eight or so inches of your herringbone stitch here, what I want you to do is put that piece down. We're gonna grab another thread and needle. So this one is just hanging out here, thread and needle still on. And I'm going to repeat the exact same thing. The reason I'm doing this as two sections, and then I'll join them together near my sunflower as well as my drop, is because the herringbone stitch is going to sit in a certain direction with the V certain facing a certain way. What that's going to mean is that the bicones are going to sit in a certain direction also. I want both of my herringbone stitches to go towards the interior, so therefore I'm going to start with another piece of thread and another needle. Starting the exact same way here, I'm going to do a total of five of my seed beads here on the end, so 10 of my herringbone stitch before I add my first crystal. And then I used about 25 of my bicones going every other on that piece. I'm gonna make another piece the exact same, and then we'll come together and connect them in the middle along with our drop and our sunflower. 
Once you have your two sides finished and matching, what you're going to do is connect them in the middle first, and then we'll put the ends on, with our sunflower as well as our drop below for that nice elegant look. To attach them, I'm coming out in between my herringbone rows as if I was going to add my next two beads and I'm just adding one bead and I'm sewing down through the brick stitch, or sorry, through the herringbone stitch. So I'm right after where I would get ready to put on another one of my drops and I'm just coming out right there adding that one single point bead. You'll do this with both the right and the left. I'm going to then hop over to the other side, go back up through bead number one. So see how I'm going back through bead number one there of that herringbone stitch. I did not add my little bead and go back up. I'm just going circling around. So that gets me to that little point there right at the end. You're going to do the same thing on the other side, and then we're going to get ready to add our sunflower as well as our drop. So you want to look at the back of your sunflower. There's two different ways the backs of the sunflower go. Some of them go that they're on a diagonal for the piece when it sits like an oval, with the holes going like that. Some go straight up and down. This one here goes straight up and down. I'm going to put it so that my long portion is coming right on top of the crystal. To do so, I want to come down through the piece. So I'm coming out that bead right there. I'm going to add one more bead as well as one of my four millimeter bicones and then another bead. I'm going to sew down through the sunflower, going from one side to the other, straight across. You can see this is going to put me right in the middle there. From here, our needle and thread, we're going to gather some beads to go through and connect it to that V. I want you to add a total here of one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven 11 OC beads. We're then going to sew through the front of the piece. From here, we're going to add seven more C beads. After coming out the back, and we're going to sew back up through that sunflower bead, as well as through the 11 O and the crystal. And bring our thread and needle out. When you give that nice tight pull, you're going to see that the drop hangs right below the crystal. From here, what we're going to do is coming out the top, I'm going to connect it to the other strand. So on the other strand, I'm going to put this side down. On the other strand, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I'm coming out this center, and it's going to go this way. I'm going to add my one bead that sits in the middle. Go down bead number two. Circle back over to bead number one right there along the two at the bottom. Go back through that center bead there. And then I'm ready to add the same thing. So I'm gonna add one 11 ounce seed bead. And then I'm gonna take my thread and needle, just like the other side, down through that 11 ounce and crystal. So we're sharing that. Then I'm gonna circle around through and reinforce back through the seed beads, around through the top. When I get up here to the crystal, I'm simply going to tie the thread ends together and tie them off. If you're in my case like this, where you have one thread that's a little bit shorter than the other, you can actually go ahead and knot it here and then circle back through. I'm gonna show you here, connecting the other side. I'm gonna go up through. So this is my longer piece of thread because I'm running out of thread with the other one. So this is kind of how to problem solve. Going back up, connecting it to the secondary side, repeating that connection where I go back one row of the herringbone stitch. Give a nice tight pull. Come down through that center C bead then, down through the crystal, down through the 11, out through the bottom of the crystal. And when it comes to piecing things together or sewing ends together, it's basically the same as sewing on a button, so don't overthink it. Going through then the crystal, if you want to, you can put some C beads behind there 
as well, rather than the thread exposed, or even a little crystal. Back up through the seed beads on the opposite side, and out. Once I'm out here, because it's going to be behind the sunflower, I'm going to take my two thread ends, tie them together, and burn off the thread to complete the necklace. Now all I have to do is go in and add my clasp to be able to put my necklace on. So remember we left some thread at the ends of both of the sides in order to attach our clasp guard and clasp on. Now when I look at my piece and I have it on, laying down here, you can see my crystals to the bottom of one side, my crystals to the bottom of the other, and this lady violet pendant is just hanging right and in the center. At the end of the necklace then, we left ourselves a little room. You're gonna grab one of your 11 OC beads just like we did on the opposite side. I've already attached one side of my clasp. I'm gonna take my thread and needle up through the end, bring it back down through that same 11 OC bead and go down to the opposite side as if I'm still doing the herringbone stitch. Circling around one more time, just like we connected our crystals at the bottom, we're going back through bead number one, going back through the 11 OC bead, go through your clasp, and then back down through the 11 O, as well as back down through the seed beads. Once you go back down through the seed beads, you can go down a couple rows of the herringbone stitch, circle your thread around, bringing it back up the opposite way. And then simply find some points to go underneath a bridge thread or a connector thread between the two beads. Go underneath, make a loop, sew through the loop once, sew through the loop twice for a nice little sewer's knot. Give a nice tight yank. And then I'm gonna sew back down through the herringbone a little bit. I'm using the exact same technique on both sides. From here, I'm gonna pull my thread and needle through and then simply burn down my thread end so that you can't see the end of the thread there. That's gonna complete your Lady Violet necklace. And make sure also to give a little bit of feedback if you want to, if you changed up the count, if you did a different number of seed beads, and you can always share pictures too of the different things that you've made as well. As always, thanks so much for joining me in creating this Lady Violet necklace. Remember this simple herringbone technique can be changed up with the addition of drops, different sized crystals, as well as seed bead fringe coming off the ends. You can go smaller and get bigger as you get to the center and even change out these center drops for anything of your choosing. If you do make changes, make sure to give a little feedback below in the comment section and let us know how you changed it up. You can also post your pictures in our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making of your own Lady Violet, De Lady Violet designs. Remember, if you need to, you can shop with us online at potomacbeads.com as well as potomacbeads.eu and check out the description of the video below to get some links to the products that were used in this one. As always, if you haven't yet, hit that little subscribe button so you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy your Lady Violet necklace.